A solution to a Towers of Hanoi problem is a sequence of moves that transfers an entire stack of disks from one pole to another, following the three important rules of the puzzle. The disks must be moved one at a time. No disks can ever be in the air or on the ground while another one is being moved. And there can never be a larger disk on top of a smaller one. The most straightforward way to solve this problem is to use a recursive algorithm. To move n disks, we first move n minus 1 disks out of the way. We move the bottom disk, and we again move n minus 1 disks, this time onto the final pole. We'd like to make a claim about the number of moves that this algorithm requires, given a problem of size n, in other words, of n disks. And we'd like to prove that our claim is correct. Moving one disk takes exactly one move. To move two disks, we have to move the smaller one then the bigger one, and then the smaller again, so a total of three. To move three disks, we must move two, which takes three, then the big one, and then two again, so seven. To move four disks, we have to move three twice with the biggest one in between, and so forth. Suppose that we want to move n disks. Call the number of moves required to move n minus one disks, m of n minus one. Then we can describe the number of moves for n disks in terms of that. We move n minus 1 disks twice, plus one move for the biggest disk. We can call this m of n. Look at this chart. It appears that to move n disks requires 2 to the n minus 1 moves. But what can we actually prove? Our analysis of the algorithm tells us that the number of moves required for n disks is twice the number of moves for n minus 1 disks plus 1. But we want what we call a closed form. We want to compute the number of moves directly as a function of n. Our claim is that we can do that. The number of moves is 2 to the n minus 1. How do we prove the correctness of this claim? Well, as often happens when we analyze recursive programs, we discover a way to describe a larger problem in terms of the next smaller one. When we look at that analysis here, we see that it looks very much like a claim that we can use as the starting point for the induction step of an induction proof. And this is common. Induction is a powerful tool for proving claims about recursive programs. So let's do the proof. Our claim is that the number of moves executed by our algorithm for n disks is 2 to the n minus 1. And thus, our predicate p, the predicate that is the basis of an induction proof, of n is the claim that m of n is 2 to the n minus 1. So we first prove the base case n equals 1. m of n is 1, which is equal to 2 to the 1 minus 1, which, if n is 1, is 2 to the n minus 1. Next, we must prove the induction step we have to prove that p of n implies p of n plus 1. Or, using the definition of p of n, we can restate this as, if the number of moves required to move n disks is 2 to the n minus 1, then the number of moves required to move n plus 1 disks is 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. We assume the induction hypothesis, namely that p of n is true, so we assume that m of n is 2 to the n minus 1. Now we need to make a claim about the number of moves required for n plus 1 disks. From our analysis of our algorithm, we know that we have to move n disks out of the way and then back into place. So that's 2 times m of n plus 1 to move the bottom disk. From the induction hypothesis, we know what m of n is. It's 2 to the n minus 1. So we substitute that into our expression. Then we just do a bit of algebra. Multiply out the 2. 2 times 2 to the n is 2 to the n plus 1. And minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. We've finished the proof. If p of n is true, so is p of n plus 1. And combined with the proof of the base case, we have that for all n greater than or equal to 1, m of n is equal to 2 to the n minus 1. This proof was really easy. And it was easy because there is a natural correspondence between recursively defined algorithms and inductive proofs.